In addition to the performance graphing tools that we can use inside the vSphere client, when we're connected to vCenter or if we're connected directly to a host, we can use those graphical tools that are available to us. But if we want to do more detailed troubleshooting or if we don't have access to the vSphere client for some reason, or potentially we're running a virtualized vCenter, if you'd like to dig a little bit more into the internals, we have a utility called ESX Top. So I've already SSH'd into one of my hosts, and if I just use ESX Top from here, by default, we're going to see various CPU statistics. So at the top of the screen, we see a little bit of status information, some general information for the machine, including the load average over the last few time intervals. We can also see the number of virtual machines we have, the number of virtual CPUs that we have, and also the used rate and utilization rate. Now, the used rate and utilization rate is not necessarily going to be perfectly identical because one takes hyper-threading into account and the other doesn't. If one of the cores is utilized, we'll see utilization, but it was not necessarily used 100% when we're talking about virtualized. So by default, we're going to see the CPU details here. There's actually a help function, so I'm just going to use H to bring that up. And what we can see is that we can add and remove fields from the display. We can change the order of them, and we can also change some of the update behaviors. There's an option here called kill a world, which will actually allow us to terminate a VM right from this interface. There's also a little bit of detail related to additional CPU statistics. We can filter out everything that's not a virtual machine. We can also change some of the display options here. If we take a look down at the bottom, we see to switch the display, we can use a few different views for CPU disks and memory and so on. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But for the time being, I'll just add some additional fields to this interface with F. And you'll see there's some additional statistics that we can display, and I can just turn those on from here. And if I turn all of them on, I'm potentially going to have a whole bunch of things that are not necessarily listed on screen, and I'll have to use some of the navigation keys to move around. I'm not going to go through all the various counters that are available here because there's quite a few of them and there's still more to come. But what I will say is that on the VMware knowledge base, there's a very good document about interpreting the ESX top statistics. It's actually written for 4.1, but most of that information still carries over. So if you'd like an explanation of what exactly all of these things really mean and how to interpret them, that's really the source to go to. If we move over to D, we'll see the disk adapters. This will show us our host bus adapters. For example, we can see command rates and so on here. We can add a couple of additional details here with the fields. We've also got an entry for disk services under U, and we can actually see utilization on the different paths rather than just on the HBAs. So for the various devices presented over those HBAs, we can start getting statistics for those paths and or in this case you'll see I have an NFS data store also listed. If I switch over to M for memory, we can see a lot of additional memory details and we can also see some details at the top related to swapping and memory sharing and memory compression and so on. So those are all very interesting features of VM kernel. And if we move over to V, we can see disks related to the virtual machines. So we can actually see virtual machine IO activity. If we use N, we can see network details down to the VM NIC level as well as the virtual machine level. And if we hit P, we can get some power management details. So that just gives us a brief overview of what ESX Top is capable of doing. But we do have the ability, if we go back to one of these views, to use K for kill, and we can actually terminate a virtual machine this way. But we can also do that using ESX Cli. So you might want to take a look at the video for that earlier on in the course.